test one, two, three. Here, look. All right, let's see if we have any sound. Come, come, come. Hello, YouTube friends. Just about ready for you guys to come on board. Waiting for our Facebook friends now to do the same. Preferably with microphone sound. Hello, microphone sound. Do we have any? Oh, it's very soft. Very peculiar. Okay. Um... Hang on just a second, folks. Let me see if I can fix this. Uh, hello, Facebook friends. No sound, I see. Now, do we have a little bit now, Facebook? It's not very good, I'm afraid, but I think it should be, should be there. Robert, do we have sound now? Now do we have sound? I think, okay, we do, I think. Let me know, Barbara, give me a confirmation. Good to see you, thank you so much. All right, oh, well, let's get legal <laughs> with my broken clapper. <laughs> I'm gonna, finally gonna have to break down and buy a new one. Day of the Art Adventure number 901. <laughs> yeah, can things get any more <laughs> rough and ready around here um, okay thank you thank you Barbara all right so my last broadcast number 900 by the way for those of you who missed it Barbara if I don't know if you missed it that's all right um, I used a pretty radical photomechanical uh, devices in this case I in Photoshop I printed out an image this size, then traced my print, and then used, then taped this up here and made corrections. So I'm very, very close. Oops. <laughs> Good grief. Okay. <Here's laughs> so that's what they, that's what they look like, and I'm, I'm close enough to graduate to oils on that. But before I go there, let's just throw things around and make a big mess. All right, so before I continue with Paul and Nancy, I'm going to go back and pick up Laura and Ian. I think, oh, you can almost see their pictures there. there there's Laura and Ian right there. I have, I have another image of them, just their heads on the other side, but I'm not ready for that degree of detail yet. So let's see. I think I would like you guys to be able to see... Um, the reference while I'm working on it. So let's see if I can make that work. I know. All right, so on this one so far, you know what, hang on. I just realized the other day I discovered, I don't usually paint on this kind of canvas, and I discovered that this support bar is before I move on to oils, I will have to remove that, and I'll probably spray this, or not, I'll brush on uh, some a solution to tighten this up so it's tighter. When I'm all finished with the painting, I might put this back in if I think it needs it, but uh, to tell you the truth, I cannot imagine any painter anywhere being able to paint with that board. I mean, I just can't imagine how soft someone would have to paint to before it hits that. Anyway. Shame on the manufacturers. That, that's, and I don't know what the brand is, and I'm not sure I should tell you since I just said shame on them. But that is a bad, that is a bad canvas, there, folks. I can get away with, and I wish I'd remembered to remove it uh, right now, but I didn't. All right, so I'm going to continue to paint for a little while, at least, without any photo mechanical. What I used to call cheating, Barbara, you've heard me call it cheating for years, and 
and I'm trying to mend my ways and um, call it devices. One of one of my fairly new f viewers sent me a really that made me decide to abandon the the term cheating, which I and again, as you know, I always said cheating is legal, but anyway, so he convinced me that I might be damaging some journey, some people in their journey with that terminology. So, I, so here I am then painting Ian and Laura. I'm painting this for Laura's father, Larry. Thank you very much, Larry. Hope you hope you get to catch uh, some of the, this broadcast. Lovely couple and lovely photographs. Somebody <laughs> somebody said on Saturday it looked like a I don't know if they said 80s. Whoops, did we just lose sound? We just lost Facebook completely. Here, let's see if we can get him back up. Okay, we've lost Facebook for, I hope, for just a minute. YouTube, bear with me for just a minute. I'm over here restarting my uh, controller. Oh, and it now it's saying it won't do it. We might have lost uh, Facebook permanently. Again, due to no fault of my own, but due to inferior equipment. Inferior equipment that cost me a total of $1,000. <laughs> just in case you want to know. In case you wanted, some of you are saying, well, why don't you just buy better stuff? Well, number one, I'm an artist, so I don't know what that means to you. I'm not a starving artist, but um, my wife is not supporting me. I'm supporting her. I am not retired. I do not have some fancy schmancy 401k retirement fund or anything like that. I'm an artist, so I don't have, tragically, a lot of discretionary income. I'm not a famous artist yet. I'm working on it. Anyway, so there you go. So I can't throw up my first thousand dollar investment and buy another thousand dollar. Now I'm being a little bit, I'm being a little bit, what's the word? The camera cost four hundred dollars and the phone that's controlling it cost actually way more than six hundred. But anyway, it's a phone, you know. It's <laughs> so it's not like we, I went up to the store and laid down a thousand bucks. I have even more upset. Okay, so I am as I called it on this broadcast, flying solo. <laughs> Quite misleading, I, I don't know what else to call it. What I mean is I'm, um, I'm trying, what I'm trying to indicate is I'm just um, restarting my camera now. You uh, YouTube people, I'll keep painting for use guys till, till we can get our Facebook camera back up and running again. I am. Yeah. Do you need me? to work on more than one portrait at a time.
Do I have to come and look, Doug? Or can you describe it to me? I need to. Oh. Okay, YouTube friends, uh, Facebook is still not back online with us yet. Uh, Okay. Oh, so this right here. Oh, oh yeah, but up to there, it's only 22 inches. Right. Yep. Yep. So 24 inches. Like that. I know. I'm bearing. That's right. Yeah. No. <laughs> we can we can go in here at an angle like that. That's correct. Can we go in at this one? <laughs> I'm not trying to be okay. You know, no. Exactly no. Sat up here for a few minutes trying to figure out how to do it. You you might be able to get one in. You might be able to get one in here. I mean, not one. I'd get them all in the same slot. From here and there. I agree. I don't think we'll know until we try one. But there again, we're going to get some Uh huh. I know. At what point do we get eight feet in we, that we clear this? Yeah. That's the hole I'm talking about. Okay. Does this lock work? That's eight feet right here, so go 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 down. Why? No 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 no. No 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 no. No no. Now go down. How far, go all the way down to the floor. Yeah, yeah, be, be, come up until you're not hitting the come up until you're not hitting the wall. And uh, the problem there is we, we don't have two feet underneath that, that shelf. Yeah, I don't think it can be done. Okay, so there you go. You have to cut it. If, um, four feet you can get in. Start a, cut, cut to one of them in half, four footers. Start with that and see how it looks. Right. Well, that the board you got your feet on is four foot. Just slide that over. Do we have any two by fours left over? Yeah, that's right. 
Do we have any 2 by 4s still left over? Really? You did. I thought you did. Okay, that's it. I got to run. Carry on. Thanks. Do the best you can. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, how late? I don't know. Uh, a while. I mean, I'll be working till 10 or 11. But uh, that, that's not what I'm... Not, not you. As long as you want. Within reason. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear me talking or not. Are you there? All right. <laughs> oh, God. More fun. You guys all talking to each other. Thanks. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Static. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for Uncle telling me it's static. It's fixed now. I'm going to try to reconnect Facebook again, maybe one more time. <laughs> Could you hear me when I was upstairs, Barbara? That's funny. All right. It's getting more serious here. I've got to restart this phone. All right. I'll keep, I'll keep painting again. Sorry for the horrible interruptions. Um, I've got a, a man working on the, our attic upstairs. Believe it or not, as messy as um, this particular drawing is, it does it does feel like I have a, a bit of a likeness. Now I happen to know that that sometimes that that sense that you have a likeness um, is true in the early, very abstract stages, <laughs> and then as you get as you get more precise, the, you, you lose it. <laughs> so it's, it's actually partly a a trick of the of the abstraction, this trick of the looseness that lets the viewer's eye uh, fill in the blanks. So I've had certainly had that experience more than once. It's like, ooh, it's actually looking like Ian, and then and then as I proceed to more details, Ian disappears. Uh, so we'll see. I hope that doesn't happen. Ian and Laura here in this painting. And again, I will certainly utilize uh, whatever, whatever photo mechanical measuring, whatever devices, whatever tricks are needed in order to um, capture a perfect likeness. I will, I will use those devices, but I always like to start out, as I'm calling it today, flying solo. I guess that means without no instruments. That's why I should have said it, flying without instruments. That's what I'm doing. There we go. It's a better, that, makes, that makes more sense of that mixed up analogy. It was mixed up anyway. All right. Having said that, though, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> now, now I'm going to do you some instruments. So this is a a proportioner, and I've already actually already set it up to be um, the right proportions. I am not going to show you. You can watch me, but I'm not going to stop and explain how to use this. Uh, I have a a link. Yeah, shoulders are good. I have a link to this device on my uh, YouTube channel community page, okay? If you're on my YouTube channel, if you back up, don't do that now, but back out, you will see that there is a 
a tab along the top. Let me do that again. A tab bar on my personal YouTube channel. Home videos, playlists, or playlists and videos community. Click on that, go back a month or two if you want to, and you'll, you'll see a picture of this and a link to uh, the page that describes it. So again, I, I don't want to, I just don't want to take the time today to, to give a clinic on it. I might do that some other time, not today. All right, now that's weird because I looked at my painting, I'll call it a sketch, the stage it's in right now, painting sketch and I, I felt like maybe this was, I had it too short, but now that I measure it with the device, I actually had it too long. That's strange. Let's check the, the width from the end of her finger to his waist. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, whatever. <laughs> we will keep on. Having said that, Here's, here's another device, very, very simple. Simple, simple, simple. I actually invented this to take with me. Uh, I invented this to take with me to, to weddings. Uh, it just, just helps capture, compare things. Okay, the outside of her left eye is the tip of her fingers. Oh yeah, okay, that's, that's what I thought. So. And use a pencil for a moment. I've got her pencil. I've got her her hand coming over way too far. Let's do that again. Yeah. This is more like that. Indeed, when I painted these guys, Laura and Ian, last Saturday, um, I, I I rendered them pretty quickly. Not making excuses, not apologizing, just that's the way it was. And so I could I could be both proud and say, hey, I got pretty darn close for doing it really quickly, or I could be embarrassed. Pride would be appropriate. It just is what it is. As close as I got with a spitballing is what some people call it these days. <laughs> I was just spitballing. And now I'm making some corrections with now, shall we say, minimal instruments, minimal uh, photomechanical devices or tricks. Photomechanical, I would also include a grid in that description, a grid uh, proportion of proportional dividers. Oh, they're around here somewhere. Yeah, here they are. Classic, I mean, cheap proportional dividers. Or the thing I'm using a minute ago, which is a proportioner. I, you know, just for what it's worth, my my experience with a uh, with a proportion, either proportioner or proportional divider. Um, is that it's great for big measurements, big shapes, uh, not very good for fine stuff like facial features. So that's, that's my impression. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's exceptions to that. I'm sure there are people who would say, no, no, they're perfect, or whatever. Yeah, okay, good. You have more skill than I do, good for you. Um, but that's my impression, is that they're good for blunt. Uh, oh, come on. Sorry. I have just figured out what's going on, you guys. I'm sorry, with my Facebook friends, which they are not with us, because I have a, literally a bad cable somewhere. Uh, the back of my hand, the back of my pinky, was brushing up against a cord 
that's hanging in space. And it was sending, that was sending code to my phone. That was a, a frustration, in case, you, in case you wondered what that was. So now I gotta be careful not to touch, not to dangle that cord at all. All right, let's go back to see if we can get Facebook going. And all of a sudden my, it's real loud. Monitor's real loud. Again, bear with me just a second. YouTube people, I think we're gonna get our, we're gonna get our, Facebook friends back up and running. We are indeed. Hallelujah. All right. That means I also have in-ear monitor, which gives me a great more, great deal more confidence that I'm broadcasting if I can hear myself. Do, I have a project in the works, these guys, that, these days, these days that I haven't been able to share with you guys in quite a while, and I'm really anxious to. Um, all right, come on. Facebook almost all up and running. All right. Um... Now, who knows what's going to happen with the coronavirus, but um, the world that we're all now living in temporarily. Um, but um, I'm teaching a class this summer and fall on anatomy, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a 12-week 12 12-week 12 class. And one of the reasons I'm teaching it is because I myself uh, want to improve in my anatomy skills. So I've actually been doing quite a bit of preparatory work on it, and I can't wait to show it to you. I'm just, uh, uh, thankfully, too busy with, uh, with money-making jobs. <laughs> so it's a good problem, good problem to have. Uh, but I, I'm really anxious to share that with you guys. I some of you have seen, I think I've got about 12 or 15 episodes on my on a playlist called Anatomy Masters on my, on my YouTube channel. And I look forward to adding to that soon. But I've just been having a, honestly, I've been having a ball practicing my, in growing my, sharpening up my base of knowledge about uh, figure drawing. In fact, here, some, and this is an impression I have at the moment. Um, poss probably the best uh, resource, that's the word I'm looking for, the best resource in the world for anatomy drawing at this crazy season. I don't mean coronavirus season, I mean this day and age, so, so to speak, is Pinterest. In fact, I myself have amassed quite, quite a collection of anatomy references um, I have on my Pinterest account, which is, I don't know, Dan Nelson Art or something. Or you can find me if you just search. Um, I have 15 categories and sometimes dozens of references inside each category. Um, so the categories are arms, legs, hips, torso, shoulders, arms, hands, feet, neck, head, features, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and so on. So all of those are subdivided, and, I'm, and there are thousands of references still on, on um, 
good references in the, on uh, Pinterest that I haven't even made reference to yet. So anyway. But the main task, the main challenge, if you will, with anatomy is not to look at things, but to draw things. To be good at anatomy, you have to draw. Well, I'm, since I'm on the subject, I don't plan to stand up very long, but since I'm on the subject of anatomy and portraiture, same thing, there are two, I haven't said this in a long time, so it's about time I say it again. There are two separate and distinct skills that are needed to be good at to, in early in your figure figure drawing and, and portrait drawing uh, journey. Two distinct and separate skills. And they are observation and rote memory. So observation is what you see me doing here, looking at a photograph and copying it. That's one skill. But believe it or not, there's a, a separate and almost equally important skill, and that's rote memory, rote memorization. So I just call it, I typically call it rote, R-O-T-E is the word I'm saying. Um, and that's where one learns what are the typical ratios of the human face and the human body. And um, I like to call this the art professor's dirty little secret. Because let me describe a an, an typical art professor, art school scenario. The, they bring in a model, the model sits in front of the students, the students stand at their easels and try to capture the, uh, the, the model. And then the professor, a person like myself, wiggles his, his or her said, head, <laughs> picks up his piece of Conti, her piece of Conti crayon, and with great panache proceeds to draw the figure. And all the students sit there go, with their mouth hanging open, say, how did he, she do that? And the dirty little secret is the, the professor, <laughs> at least all the professors I ever knew, are pretending now they don't. I think a lot of not. They're not doing this, you know, with a mean spirit. But I think it's just such a part of the culture, they don't even realize it that they're doing it. That professor has actually two skills, very finely honed, at work when they're doing that drawing. One is the powers of observation, which all the students are watching at the moment. Go, wow, that's amazing. The dirty little secret. The professor's dirty little secret is that the, that professor, he or she, if he's, he or she's worth his salt, could draw that's the recumbent figure without anybody sitting on the stand at all. Do you understand? Like, I can draw a pretty doggone good human being, realistic, accurate, believable, off the of my head. Why? Because of I've done my homework of rote memory. And that's what my class is about, that I'm teaching, is, is, is in fact sharpening uh, sharpening that skill. Now, I need a really simple instrument here and I don't have one. Bear with me just a second. I'm going to go into the kitchen again. I guess when I'm downstairs working, my kitchen is my third studio, isn't it? I'm hoping there's a ruler in this drawer. Oh, and the last. Alicia, do you know where that red, yellow plastic ruler went? Never mind. Okay. Never mind, I do not have a ruler. I wanted to compare. Um, oh, I do have a tape measure. Tape measure should do. Yeah, all right. <laughs> a little bit awkward. I just want to see how big is this head? Let's say six inches. Oh, yeah, so I can't use this for measurements. There, that's what I wanted to know. I thought it was bigger, I just had to. Unfortunately, triple check. I think I'll paint a little bit more though, flying again, sort of more or less, without instruments to use the to use the 
to use the flying analogy. I'll do, I'll do a little bit more. Just looking and copying. This, in my opinion, I've heard others say this, this is some of the hardest mental work that you can do. I believe the number is 38% of the uh, neurological path uh, pathways, <laughs> cables <laughs> that come into the brain are visual. Somebody can check check on the up on that. See if that number is right. But I, I think that that's what sticks in my mind. A, a huge number amount of uh, our mental work, mental energy uh, goes into processing visual visual stuff. And um, after a good day or afternoon or session of uh, drawing, copying, observing, doing what I'm doing right here, looking and drawing. Um, uh, most people are exhausted. I, I experience this, see this over and over and over again um, when, I'm, when I'm teaching a, a painting class or a drawing class that uh, typically my students run out of energy and, and begin to fade serious. Like the class goes merely from 10 to 4, which is pretty typical, um, with a, with a you know, 45 minute, which usually stretches to an hour lunch break. So it's really only five hours. Um, by the time 4 o'clock gets there, I find that many times my students are seriously dragging, you know, half-masked, half-masted. And it's, and it's, and I understand it, it's because they've been working, they're, they're, they've been doing, well, I think somebody calls it neuro, neuro-ups. <laughs> That's not the right word, is it? Like push-ups, only neurological push-ups. I forget, somebody came up with a cute name for that, and I'm forgetting right now what it was. She's going to use a little palette knife. It's very unusual for me to use a palette knife in the, somewhat unusual, I guess I should say, in, to use a palette knife in the, uh, in the acrylic phase of a painting, but it does happen once in a while. Oh, his beard isn't nearly long enough is it isn't that funny you guys are you guys are probably all jumping through your through your monitor saying dan dan psst, dan his ear, beard's way too short you're just waiting for me to catch up to you See, i hadn't even paid much attention do you know what i mean to the length of his beard virtually none evidently because <laughs> i didn't realize oh wait <laughs> it's a lot longer than that there you go so our brain can only, our eye, if you will, can only see but so much, can only take in but so much information at one time. And, you know, while, while you guys are looking at one thing, I was looking at something totally different. <laughs> this is kind of a fun guy, uh, fun guy to paint. Uh, thank you, Larry. His name is Ian, and he has the nerve to plan to marry this beautiful young lady at his side, whose name is Laura. And I'm doing this painting for Laura's dad as a wedding gift for his daughter. Very sweet, thank you, Larry, for letting me be a part of this. Oh, he's wearing a bow tie. <laughs> I didn't even realize that till I, till I turned the picture around, and saw it more up closer, upper closer. 
<laughs> Sometimes I just say things to drive the English majors crazy, okay? You gotta know that, there's this little devious side of me. I grew up in a home where the king's English was spoken better than the king. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be the queen's English anyway for the last 70 years, isn't it? Be that as it may, my parents, and, and uh, believe me, I am not complaining. Oh my goodness, I feel bad for all the kids who didn't grow up with that kind of advantage. I could, man, passing, you know, at least the which one is correct kind of grammar test, you know, all the way, all the way through grad school, as a matter of fact. You know, but it's starting in junior high. You know, you, you pick which, which usage, which grammar is correct. Half the students, I had a friend one time that said he decided to come out of the, his backwoods country subculture. And he said when he was going through college, it was real easy. He learned that everything that sounded right to him was wrong and everything that sounded wrong was right. <laughs> so that was his method <laughs> for, for learning to speak. He's now a very successful, has been for decades, successful administrator of major hospitals, executive director of hospitals. So he must have done a pretty good job of getting himself out of the ghetto, so to speak. But I thought that was funny. He said if it sounded right to him, he knew that it was wrong. If it sounded wrong, it was probably right. Uh, my experience was quite the opposite. My, I heard proper English. Anyway, all that is to say, so sometimes when I use bad grammar, oh, I'm just doing it to drive you purists crazy. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about me. You don't have to be bothered anymore. Mostly I'm doing it on purpose. How are you guys doing? You doing good? Hey, Richard Tardell is back and Glenn Roop is back. Last time Glenn Roop got on, I embarrassed him to death and got all historical. <laughs> Glenn, nice to hear. Nice to hear you see your face anyway. Uh, well, not, yeah, yeah, I'm not seeing his face. I'm seeing his name. <laughs> Glenn and I were in almost junior high together. He was in junior high when I was in high school. Here's one of my claims to fame as a 10th grader. Now, as a 10th grader, I was uh, an up and coming distance runner. And so I had, I had a distance runner's physique, lean, lean <laughs> and lean, <laughs> lean and mean, uh, not very mean, but very lean. I was stronger than I looked. Well, and Glenn Roop was one of these I think he was in eighth grade, is that right? Glenn, are you two years behind me? So he was a middle schooler, you know? And he was a one of these <laughs> strong beyond his years. Also lean, but lean and definitely mean. <laughs> and uh, we arm wrestled in the school cafeteria. And Glenn, I don't know if you remember, I, I at least arm wrestled you to a draw. Or, which I was, I was happy to get out of it that easy. <laughs> Glenn went on to become a pretty good high school pole vaulter. Did you know I, did you even know I knew all this stuff about you, Glenn? Did, did you realize that I even knew and remembered all this stuff? I do, man. I remember my childhood very well and youthhood. By that time, I had moved far away to a school in the suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio, but I still kept track of my old friends up in Kingsley, Michigan. Some of you guys need to look it up just for fun. There are still places in the world that are beautiful. At least I'm assuming it's beautiful, Glenn. Well, it's the last time I looked. I checked in on Google Earth every once in a while just to see how you guys are doing, Glenn. I get an aerial view and street view and Looks like a delightful little town. I don't even know if you're still living there. Are you still there? Glenn, am I embarrassing you to death? <laughs> am I talking, talking to you like this? That kind of looks like him. That uh, almost looks like her. We're getting there. Let me, let me repeat something I, I say often because I don't know if it's going to happen this time or not. Um, my... 
I get part of the reason I even have the nerve to do, you know, portraits live <laughs> in, in front of everybody is because I, ha I have no pretensions. Um, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to fake you out. I'm not trying to fake you out and make you think I'm any better than I am. I, I, as Popeye said, I am what I am. <laughs> That's, I, I yam <laughs> what I am. Anyway, so I'm not trying to pretend that I'm an awesome portrait painter because that clearly I'm not. I'm a, I would call myself a, depending where you're at in your journey, I would call myself a mid-level, mid-level uh, portrait painter. And um, so you get to you get to watch me, you know, make embarrassing mistakes and all kinds of stuff. Unlike my the person I was talking about this morning, Joshua Larock. You can look him up. He just posted. He doesn't give a lot away free that I can tell, but he posted a, a step by step. It's just just Larock, L A R O C K, just like it sounds. Joshua Larock famous, you know, up-and-coming young artist. And um, so when he broadcasts, he's, he's, he's good enough to show off, you know. He knows he's not going to mess up. And so I have I've mentioned several times that I, my, my portrait skill level is roughly... I think about roughly 40% of the of the portraits that I start um, that I'm able to achieve either a perfect or nearly perfect likeness. Okay, I'll back up a little bit. And again, I'm just I'm just giving you my impression of myself so that you kind of know where to categorize me. Does that make sense? So when you watch me do portraits, you're not thinking. Oh, Oh, I'm watching a world-class portrait. No, 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 no. Okay, you, you know that. Okay, so I'm good enough that here's here's how good I am. That um, without using any devices whatsoever, like when I go to a live portrait session, which I love to do, haven't done in seven years because I've been too busy doing other stuff, but I still love it. Um, I'm good enough that you can always tell who it is. You know, if you know Mabel, if Mabel is our model, you know Mabel, you can look at my painting and go, oh, Mabel. That, I'm good enough to do that. But I think a perfect likeness. But it's always, hey, that's Mabel. Hmm. <laughs> Mabel, something's wrong. <laughs> Nose, mouth, ear, noise. Oh, you, you know, usually mouth or eyes. Something's wrong with her mouth or eyes. Maybe your nose. So I think, I think that about 40% of the time um, I'm able to, I, I luck out, so to speak, and, and capture pretty much a perfect likeness without any cheating. So I'm, again, I'm only saying that. That's neither bragging nor groveling, neither one. That's just, that's just the fact of the matter. That's how good I am and how good I ain't both combined, okay? Um, and uh, so I always like to do what I'm doing here, which is, oh, come on, give it a try, give it a try. Plus, it's good for my brain. My brain is working really hard, as I was talking about earlier. My skill is, in, my, my skill, I'm practicing. My skill is increasing um, as I just try. So, of the four portraits that I started last Saturday, so these two um, I have used extreme photomechanical tricks to, a, okay, I started out without any. So if my, if my formula is right, of these four portraits, one and a half of them <laughs> should, should come out perfect. <laughs> if, if my 40% number is about right. And again, again, the only reason I'm telling you all this, again, it's so you just have a grid. You can say, yeah, you can tell your friends, yeah, I watched this guy who's not very good, <laughs> he's about 40%. 40% of the time he's really good. <laughs> I'm not even embarrassed about that. Partly because I, I know how, I know, I know something about how um, 
teaching and learning how pedagogy happens. And this is actually a, this is actually, I believe, a tried and true principle of pedagogy, if you will, of teaching the, the, oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I've got the distance between her nose and her mouth is wrong. Her nose needs to go up, so I'll fix that in a minute. Is that um, people who just learn something tend to be better teachers. So, and I, here's another, another way of saying the same thing. There really is a tendency, a propensity for people who, be, who have become consummate masters of anything are often not very good teachers of it. And that, and that is often the case. Um, so, again, I'm not making excuses for myself, but I think that's part of the reason why I'm a, often a pretty good teacher, because I'm in the trenches kind of with you learning how to okay good good news happiness it's always nice when you see a mistake did anybody, did anybody already tell me that that nose was no nope, nobody said anything that pencil's too dull i have these you know grease kind of pencils sort of kind of like a conti crayon in a pencil form very unconventional to use pencils. I say that nearly every time I pick them up. She said, I just don't want to be confusing young people and say, hey, I thought that was normal. No, no, no. The use of pencils in this manner is not normal. Again, I'm neither apologizing nor bragging. Just, I just don't want to con confuse any young people and make you think, oh, yeah, no, we use pencils all the time. No, 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 we do not use pencils. Most artists do not use pencils in this manner. You're welcome to copy me if you want, but please understand if you do so, you're joining me in, uh, in an unconventional uh, trick, okay? Unconventional uh, technique. Not quite rare. I would say not quite rare, but, un but unusual. All right, I am to the point right now by the way, I've, uh, a bunch of her hair comes, as you can see, way almost all the way to her mouth. I will add that later, but I don't want to do hair now because it will get in the way of me trying to um, capture her features. I'll add the hair later, the way it is in real life. <laughs> her hair does not move, does not move any of her facial features. <laughs> I'll paint it in that same way. But I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more on her eye. In fact, I might just do it with a pencil since it's right here. Um, I'm, I'm almost going to say something. Oh, I'm almost to the point where portress, 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 portrait blindness is setting in. And I know, I can feel it, that I'm no longer seeing uh, Laura, in this case, um, accurately because I've been staring at her for too long. So I can't see my errors the way I could if I were to put her aside and let my brain look at a bunch of other stuff and then, and then come back. Um, Wait just a second. We might we might do something that I've um, haven't done on on a broadcast. I don't think ever. It's a very common trick, and that is turn it upside down. Let's go ahead and do that just for fun, so we can show some of you guys. This is this is a, a very mild uh, cheating, if you will. I'm sorry, I shouldn't use the word cheat. A very mild uh, photomechanical trick uh, unless you're <laughs> unless of course you're refer talking about a live model in which case this is an extremely radical um, <laughs> photomechanical because the models generally frown upon being turned upside or being asked to turn themselves upside down okay so I'm, I'm being silly as you can tell this is uh, this is Betty Edwards drawing on the right side of the brain. Comes uh, so you, of course you, know, you don't do it this way, right? <laughs> you do it this way. There we go. Now another another very mild photomechanical trick 
device that I am not yet using on this particular portrait would be if my photograph were exactly the same size as my painting. Oh yeah, see I'm seeing all kinds of things now. All right, so I have fresh eyes. Let's just get to it. Um, I'm gonna start at the top of his head. First of all, his eyebrow is completely wrong. It's rounded all the way along its entire length. It's rounded, it goes farther down uh, toward the end. And this one's closer, it needs to be a little wider. And his eyes, likewise. How did you guys, how could you stand to watch me since you were saying, Dan, Dan, no, his eyes are rounded, Squ uh, uh, crescent shape. You know, he's squinting. The whole eye is curved. And I, I didn't have it curved enough. Thank you all. It was nice of you to just be gentle and wait for me to figure it out on my own. Thank you very much. <laughs> and and uh, the... Um, Top of his nose is quite dark. We might as well go ahead and start. I do like the lighting on this photograph, by the way. Mostly outdoor sunlight. I believe, yeah, the ph photographer, it definitely looks like a professional photograph to me. And the photographer used um, a little bit of fill flash but most of the light what we see on their faces is uh, secondary not not direct sunlight their faces are in shade but it's natural light nonetheless okay this corner goes down a little bit further or up in this case since I'm upside down goes up a little bit much too much of a proper thing too much of a good thing there we go that's better brushes that I happen to have in my hand right now are actually way too small for doing the shading like I'm doing, driving me canuts. Does anyone ever drive you canuts? <laughs> nice secondary bouncing glow on the bottom of his cheeks. Nice effect, nice Ooh, nice glow underneath his eye. So, uh, um, Ian here, his face is receiving very definite um, up light, bounced light. I don't know what it's bouncing off. Doesn't look green to me, so it doesn't doesn't look to me like it's bouncing off the grass. Aha, uh -huh. now I see I've made his, the V in his neck uh, was, was way too small. Oh, it's amazing. So again, so this is, if you're do, painting from a photograph, then turning it upside down is to be considered very minor or mild photomechanical aid. You just can't do it from life though. So it, very, very restricted to photography only. I 
I'm adding a little bit of darkness to his mustache and his beard and shaping it just a little bit when it's all way darker down here because I just hadn't gotten around to that. Both of their dark hairs meld together in the middle. That's kind of sweet, kind of romantic. When I turned her upside down, she actually actually began to look a little bit more like herself. <laughs> That's funny. That's a trick. That's an unusual. It doesn't usually work that way. But I'll take it. I, I, oh, her nose looks like it's crooked. Darn it. <laughs> we just cannot do it. And her mouth, okay, okay. I'm on her now. So let's, let's, let's go to Laura here. Mouth needs to extend this way a little bit. And let's 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 fix your chin a little bit here. I think, I don't do this too often, but I think I'm just going to push her, all of her nose, whole nose back so that I don't, don't have to, I'm not going to try to move it so much as remove it and, and uh, just come back and, and redraw it. And as much as I hate to, I think I'm going to need to pick up some small brushes to do that with. So, some dark brown paint. Now, oh, here's how far I wanted to use my left hand, but it's the wrong shape. I was going to say, how far is is her nose from her mouth, the bottom of her nose from her top lip. That is certainly a, a very important, I mean, every dimension on the face is important. I feel like that's one of the dimensions that I usually, well, I know I pay a lot of attention to it. And if I'm paying attention, I think I usually tend to get it more or less right. Now, sometimes I don't pay enough attention to it and I get it wrong. So. I don't know, maybe I don't pay as much attention as I thought, because I think. It's only when I think about it that I think I pay attention. Uh, you know, I told, told a new friend on the phone just this morning, I said, I, I said I'm not really absent-minded. My mind is always hard at work somewhere else. <laughs> she said, oh, I like that. She wrote it down. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't 
didn't think it was that brilliant. I've been saying it for years, but I've been saying it because it's so, so true of me. You know, the old absent-minded professor. I, for decades, I swore that I was not one of those. And finally, I had to give up my swearing and admit. <laughs> but then I analyzed myself, said, you know what, I'm not absent-minded. The fact of the matter is, my heart, my mind is always, and this is true, tragically true, my mind is always very hard at work, often somewhere else. Not when I'm painting. Boy, this is where I, this is where I want to be. This is where my, this is where my mind wants to hang out. But uh, much of the rest of the time, you know, to heck with the rest of the world. I say, I want, when I want to paint, let the let the rest of the world take care of itself. I want to paint. You know what I like to do on a nice, after a long day of painting or whatever? And my wife and I go out for coffee or something. You know what I like to do? Sketch. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, gives me some sense that uh, I think I might be in the right line of work. <laughs> By the way, speaking of getting away, my wife and I... Uh, uh, yesterday was our 40th anniversary. I forgot to say anything about that, either Saturday or until now. Today, I didn't say, haven't said anything about it. Anyway, yep, 40 years ago yesterday, my wife been married. 40 amazing years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to turn Laura and Ian back right side up. Let's see if I still feel like feel feel like they look like themselves. Somewhat. <laughs> I know I made some technical improvements, but I, I don't feel like I've got a great, you know, killer likeness going on yet. Um, and to tell you the truth, I feel like I could continue. Um, just keep on. This slide's too hard. It's you're, it's getting in the way. We're losing some likeness simply because of the hardness of that line. Again, happiness is seeing where the mistakes are. Boy, it's so fun when that happens. <laughs> it's like, oh, what made me think to put that there? It doesn't go there, it goes over here. Oh, see, so yeah, okay, so the inside of her eye right here. So now I'm seeing her again, I'm seeing them again, sorry, with through fresh eyes, right? So that's, that's one of the solutions for um, Portrait blindness. Good trick. I don't, one I don't use all that often. Turn it upside down. And again, the use of pencil at this point is not traditional for those of you who perhaps students saying, hey, I didn't know we could use pencils. Well, no, you can't. That is, <laughs> you can, but please understand you're breaking the rules if you do. And I am breaking the rules, but I'm aware. I know I'm breaking the rules, so it's okay, as long as you understand. Okay? Ah! <laughs> um, well, I have droned on more than long enough. Oh, I hear an amen, everybody. 
Um, <laughs> but and yet, I can't tear myself away because I see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. His his teeth don't are not that bright over here, so it's dark in his teeth. Every little thing, every little thing, either adds to or diminishes from uh, a likeness. And sometimes it seems like infinitesimal things. Okay, that this cheek doesn't go up far enough. But I'm going to have a hard time quitting here because that's just the way it is. It's hard to quit, but I, I want to quit soon. So I'm going to just do a few more minutes. Yeah, see, down here, this is all rounded right there. What was I thinking? <laughs> and again, I jest. Because the happiness is seeing those mistakes, like, oh man, Yahoo! <laughs> I, I spy another error. This makes me feel so good. Same thing on the other side of his head. It's a big curve that goes right, his, right around his eyebrow. As is so often the case, having corrected it, of course, I overdid it. <laughs> Correct it, overdo it, overcorrect it. So that's our middle name. Little pouch there. Oh, this eye's too high. I knew something was going on over there. Now is his eyebrow too high also? No, but the bottom of his eyebrow is too high. <laughs> I can't put this easel down further. I don't know. I find myself standing on my toes. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Is anybody lower this easel for me? <laughs> it's such hard work. Oh. I have, by the way, every once in a while I talk about my fancy schmancy easels. And I just, I just want to tell you, or an early journey painter. You do not need fancy easels to be a good painter. Okay? I remember for years I looked at, you know, those soggy, I mean, um, Santa Fe type easels in all the catalogs, you know? I go, good grief. Any artist who needs an easel like that just has some kind of, I don't know, ego problem or something. It's supposedly comp coping, compensating for something. That's what I always thought, and I still do think it. So I never thought, I thought, I'll never own an easel like that. And then in the course of history, as they say, I've owned about three or four or five of them. It's just funny how life goes. I've sold some, I had so many easels at one point, I just sold them on Craigslist. For five, sold one anyway for $500 for a fraction of its value. Long story. I won't tell you how I got them, but I will tell you that I didn't pay for them directly. I paid for them indirectly. I didn't pay for any of my fancy easels. Now, several of them I built myself. The fanciest one I built myself, and all the others I modified a great deal. Anyway, all right. I need to stop because uh, again, I'm I'm not seeing I'm not seeing with fresh eyes anymore. a lot of work to do. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I might take a break and just go do something very different for a while. And then come back and hope I've had enough of a break to see this with fresh eyes. Aha, uh -huh, too much of a gap between this, this eyebrow and this eye. Do you see that? How can I make such a stupid mistake? 
once again, I jest, please, I hope you understand. I'm not, I'm not really kicking myself or ridiculing myself. Um, no, quite the contrary. Happiness is seeing your mistakes. I'm gonna go with, I, I don't think the eye is too low. I think the eye is okay, I think. I could be wrong about that. And now his eyebrow is too, too wide. Let's make this, this is the last thing I'm going to do before I go, okay? It'll be very arbitrary because I'll go on driving myself and you guys crazy. Because I keep thinking I'm about to quit and then I just keep going and going and going and going. All right, I am going to first force myself to put my brushes down and sort of refuse to look at that too carefully <laughs> and bid you all a fond adieu. It's been fun having you on board. Hello, Helen. I didn't say hi to you yet. Hello, Michael. Oh, Michael, I am with you all the way, man. Exactly. Sometimes you have a likeness when you're in the rough stage and then you start details say no more i feel your pain <laughs> thanks for thanks for listening today for a while i'm close i'm happy with that i'm gonna leave it come back with flesh fresh whoosh, with flesh eyes <laughs> okay bye y'all thanks for watching <laughs>